there was a day when I realized that I could hardly bear the weight of the things that were happening in my life. I don't know if you've ever had that kind of a day where life just got complicated and messy real quick, real fast, and it got just really heavy and you just couldn't hardly bear the weight of things that were going on, changes that were happening. And that day definitely happened to me. It was a very painful season of my life, but it led me to a day where I realized I needed help. Good morning, everybody is still asleep and so I'm gonna be a little bit quiet this morning, but I am so excited about today because today I am headed on a writing retreat. I'm gonna head out today and we'll be gone for most of the next week doing a lot of writing and planning and thinking about our ministry. But I'm gonna take you along with me because I had some thoughts that I wanted to share with you today. And basically my thoughts revolve around this. I was just remembering that there was a day when I realized that I could hardly bear the weight of the things that were happening in my life. I don't know if you've ever had that kind of a day where life just got complicated and messy real quick, real fast, and it got just really heavy and you just couldn't hardly bear the weight of things that were going on, changes that were happening. And that day definitely happened to me. It was a very painful season of my life, but it led me to a day where I realized I needed help. And it was a day when I thought, I can't do this. But because God is good, it turns out that this was actually one of the best days of my life. Good morning. <laughs> what you eating? Eggs, of course. June likes three things. Eggs, eggs, avocado, avocado, and banana. I don't even realize it most of the time, but I have this tendency to believe that it's all up to me. And I even take pride in this false sense of self-sufficiency. When I'm in that place, it's hard for me to believe that there is more for me. But there is. The truth is that there's more joy and life and peace available to me than I even dare to imagine most of the time. Now don't get me wrong, I never wish to relive the painful, broken, and the hardest parts of my story that led to my loudest cries for help. But I am thankful for how God has used the unwanted parts of my story to help wake me up to my need for help. And I'm not talking about some kind of vague, mystical, magical kind of help. I'm talking about practical, tangible, real help. Help that I can put my eyes and my hands on. But I'm sad to say I have this weird tendency to neglect this powerful and practical help that's been given to me. Even still, I'm trying to lean in. I'm trying to break the bad habit of my own self-sufficiency and I'm trying to lean in to the more that God has for me. So I just wanna share with you four ways that God helps me every single day. These are all the books I'm taking with me on my trip. Are you gonna help me pack them up? So the first thing that has been so helpful to me um, is his word, the Bible. I mean, you probably saw that coming. We're called the word and worship. We believe that God's word is not only true, 100% true, but that it's also beautiful, powerful, life-giving, and helpful. And that became so apparent to me whenever I needed God's word the most whenever I just was in a place where I just needed help and I needed the help of God's word. I needed an anchor. I just didn't know what else I was gonna do. I didn't know what to believe. I needed to understand God's word for myself. I needed to know what God said for myself. When I'm not sure who God is, when I'm not sure what God wants from me, when I'm not sure how to handle a certain situation in my life, when I'm unsure about what I'm hearing and confused about what I should believe, God's word is a powerful help to me. And he gave it to me so that I could know him and so that I could find help and guidance whenever I need it the most. Help and guidance as I grow and as I face whatever comes each day. For the word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Hebrews 4.12. Wow, 
Well, I'm all packed up and I am ready to head out on this retreat. And I'm so excited to go on this retreat because Emily and I have just been really excited about how we feel like God is leading us in this ministry that he has given to us. And I'm excited to kind of vision cast and brainstorm and write a lot of stuff. Because you know, not only do we believe that God's word is beautiful, powerful, life-giving, and helpful. I know a lot of you have seen us at live events and that's mainly what we have done the last six to seven years together in the ministry that we have. But we also just believe that worship is more than our songs. And we've had that conviction for a little while now. And we've just wanted ways to kind of communicate that. And we just wanted ways to show our little traveling family on the road, what it looks like for us to live life on the road. But most importantly, what it looks like for us to live out our lives in worship to God. We just wanted to document our journey. And we also just wanted to create a lot of resources and fuel to help all of us journey together as we try to live out our whole lives in worship to God. And so that's what this channel is gonna be. That's what a lot of content we're gonna create is going to be. It's just how do we worship God with various parts of our lives, with our bodies, with our relationships, our parenting, our marriages, our work. A verse that I've just been meditating on as I've been kind of letting this idea of worshiping our lives sink deeper into my heart is Romans 12.1, which says, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Before I continue on in my journey, I did just want to mention that the second help that God gives me in my need is prayer. Honestly, prayer has been an area for me where I have really struggled and it's been something that I've really been trying to work on, especially this last year. When I can't sleep due to the overwhelming and the daunting things that are coming my way in the morning, when life gets heavy and my heart gets anxious and full of worry, prayer is the help that I need. Reading God's word is great, but sometimes I just get so anxious and I get so worried that I can hardly focus on the words that I'm reading. And when that happens, the next help that I need is prayer. I need to be able to express and breathe out my worries to God, my anxieties to God. If you think about it, it's kind of crazy. I mean, through prayer, I have access to the God of the universe. And through prayer, I get to talk to him and breathe out all the things that are making me feel anxious and making me feel afraid. I'm able to lay those burdens on him, trusting that he really does hear me. And once I lay those burdens on him, it helps me remember and really believe and feel the truth that he is working all things together for my good. You know, I think we all have this urge to breathe out our worries and kind of unload them onto somebody, which is why we complain and why we call up friends and, and do all these things. I don't think that's a bad thing, but God has invited me to unload my worries on him. And he asked me to do that because he alone can truly take them from me and then give me peace in return. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7. Well, I'm just a couple of hours into my trip and I'm passing through Chattanooga and I decided to stop at Ruby Falls to do a little bit of hiking and to see some really fun things. But while I'm here, I just thought I would mention the third way that God practically helps me and that is through church community. You know, it's kind of shocking how easily I can get discouraged and how quickly I can lose my motivation to press into the good things that God has for me. You know, I just need inspiration and I need motivation and I need encouragement to really just press on in the midst of hard days. And that's just really where other people come in. I need the body of Christ to help refresh me and help re-energize me to run the race that God has set before me. And that's really why God has given us one another so that we can help stir each other up to love and good works. And let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. Well, I didn't make it all the way to the top of the trail and that was because A, I got incredibly hot and B, I was just anxious to get on the road and get where I'm going. But while I am stuck in some traffic, I thought I would just share with you the fourth way that God helps me, which is through accountability. Now, I don't want you yelling at me in the comments below because I know I'm kind of cheating on this one, 
and I know this is really kind of more like a point three B, but I just thought it was important for me to say that my own growing sense of self-awareness has just helped me see that while refreshment and encouragement is great, I need more than that. Sometimes I need loving correction. Sometimes I need someone who cares about me to look me in the eye and give me a heartfelt warning. Someone who isn't out to shame me, but who genuinely wants to help me be all that God would have me be. A friend who wants to see me thrive. A friend who would challenge and prod me on towards beautiful and glorious Christ-likeness. A friend who really believes in God's work in me and a friend I can really trust. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. James 5, 16. <laughs> oh, I finally made it, woo! You know, sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> That was a lot of stairs. Basically, if I want to have the fullest life, then I'm gonna need some help. And you know, that's what God wants for me. He wants me to have the fullest life. In fact, Jesus said that he came so that he could bring abundant life to me and abundant life to you. And you know what? God has already been tremendously helpful to me by sending Jesus in the first place. Because since Jesus died on the cross, he removed the biggest obstacle and the biggest hindrance that I have because my sin was separating me from the source of life itself, the source and the author of life. And so when Jesus died and he took my sin upon himself and he removed my sin from me, he gave me life again. And so what this shows me and what it helps me remember is that God has really been helping me all along and I just need to now lean in to the help that he has provided to me. You know, for me personally, I just wish it hadn't taken so long for me to embrace the help that God has been offering me and that's kind of part of the reason why I'm making this video is I'm hoping it won't take a lot of pain in your life for you to embrace the help that he's offering you. But you know what, now that I think about it, isn't it kind of awesome that God even uses our own pain to ultimately help us? I finally got everything loaded in. And I am tired. But I just wanted to know, which of these four points stood out to you the most? Which resonated with you the most? Which do you feel like you need to work on the most? Which resource of help do you think you could do better at just leaning into? You know, over the last several years, like I said, I have really dug into God's word, really over the last nine to 10 years, and I have loved it. But I have not been as great at prayer and really making that a priority and a place in my life. And so that's one that I'm really working on leaning into. I'd love to know which one you're leaning into. Leave me a comment below. Love to continue talking with you about it. And if you're still here with me in this video, then I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me today and going on this trip with me. Just so you know, we do post a video every week, so you don't want to miss it. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you can go to our Facebook page and like it. Either one, we post videos in both places every week. And we post videos because we love God's Word, believe it's beautiful, powerful, life-giving, helpful, and we also love worship and believe that worship is more than singing and songs. Worship is our whole lives, and so we just post videos every week about our lives in worship and how God's Word is impacting our lives and how that leads us to worship. It's just it's a party over here. Also, another place to engage with us is over on Instagram because we're over there almost every day posting things, talking to folks, doing the Instagram story stuff. We would love to just hang out with you over on Instagram. So if you're over there, you can see the flying bubble. The worded worship is our username. Come join us over on Instagram. Bye.